we are really privileged to have justice nageshwar rao just supreme court of india chairman mediation and conciliation project committee supreme court of india on this occasion of valedictory session the topic the of our workshop was acrimony to harmony and our continuous challenging in our role as social engineers as emphasized justice bambani this workshop has been a great reminder to all of us as our roles as mediators and as officers of the court not just lawyers i welcome justice nageshwar rao for giving his special this time to all of us and guiding us further because he is heading the committee at the level of supreme court on the new various aspects relating to mediation thank you very much on behalf of samadhan family and i welcome you sir from the bottom of my heart we are really grateful to you sir justice nageshwar rao a judge of supreme court has been prior to his elevation as this was a senior advocate and a former additional solicitor general of india our chief justice justice vipin sanghi who had to just leave for some personal reasons he has led the mediation movement first as a member of the overseeing committee then as a chairman and now as a patron though he is not present physically here we all can feel his presence in absentia i i welcome from my heart to him being there for us always not only for this occasion or the training <laughs> justice manmohan has been a torch bearer in many roles prior to his role as a chairman of this committee but this time preparing conceptualizing designing each and every aspect relating to this training we are honored to have you sir not only from on the day of inaugural from the day of inaugural in all the sessions and even for valedictory thank you very much sir for being there with us i welcome justice sajdeva and justice navin chawla both members of the overseeing committee and i welcome all the honorable judges present here sitting off the dais but basically have already adorned dais in one role or the other and have guided us i welcome you all from the bottom of my heart <clears throat> there is nothing which is complete in itself so this is the beginning of journey of mediation for all of you it has never ended with us though we started in 2006 May I now request Justice Nageshwar Rao? Sorry. May May I request Justice Manmohan? Sorry. To add. Sorry. To address the mediators. Uh, justice uh, manmohan justice uh, sachdeva justice chawla the other uh, judges of uh, the high court master mediators if you can call them including uh, sadhana ramchandran the other uh, trainers and uh, the trainees i'm sure that all of you are uh, lawyers practicing in the high court so the lawyer friends i am uh, glad to be here at this uh, valedictory session of uh, the advanced uh, training for the past 2 uh, 3 days i just heard that uh, what you tried to do in the last 3 days is find uh, a way from acrimony to harmony that's what uh, she was uh, saying there is a uh, 
a principle which is uh, recognized, which is called the competitive conflict uh, co escalation cycle. I'm sure that uh, the master mediators would have heard about it. The principle is that uh, the longer a conflict uh, lasts, the more intense it is likely to become and the harder it will be to resolve. Uh, that's what uh, we speak about uh, pre-litigation mediation. Uh, in other words, uh, let us take an example of uh, a matrimonial case. Uh, if you are able to uh, mediate at the threshold of the problem, then it might be much, much easier to resolve the differences between uh, the spouses. If uh, it lasts for a longer time, uh, you would see initially to start with a 498 case, then thereafter a diverse petition, a petition filed for restitution of conjugal rights, and uh, thereafter following with the custody of child, with all sorts of allegations flying on both sides, and uh, lawyers also adding to whatever actually happened. And it will be impossible uh, to settle the matter. I have seen with my own experience after uh, these matters uh, having undergone a long time in uh, various courts come to the Supreme Court after a period of 10 years where the court either has granted divorce or has not granted divorce. Or even in transfer petitions, the first thing that we do is that why don't you try mediation? But my experience at uh, the Supreme Court during the last six years uh, has been that it is difficult uh, for people to settle their disputes after this acrimony for uh, about 10 years on an average, or even five years by the time cases are there and then people want their cases to be transferred from one court to the other. Because by that time, the relationship uh, has completely broken down and it might be difficult uh, to, for parties to resolve. So in this uh, uh, principle which I just said, it is always better that a dispute is uh, nipped at the bud. Um, I was trying to find out what is it uh, the uh, advocates who are acting as uh, mediators uh, can do uh, in this. Forget about your being mediators, you are all uh, advocates. Advocates are uh, given a license to practice law. But uh, otherwise, you are lawyers. A lawyer is a person who doesn't uh, practice in courts, but otherwise he has a, a law degree. But what is the difference uh, between a lawyer and an advocate is this. One theory that uh, is uh, propagated and promoted is that advocates who practice in courts in litigation have to develop lawyering skills. And what are uh, these lawyering skills? One of which uh, is a lawyer becoming a problem solver and a lawyer becoming a conflict manager. The idea of uh, becoming a conflict manager is uh, uh, nothing new. Even Mahatma Gandhi said that every lawyer has to promote reconciliation. And he said that uh, he mediated and settled about 200 matters. Uh, and because of that, he found uh, so much of satisfaction. Not promoting uh, litigation and trying to find uh, solutions to problems of persons uh, who have disputes is uh, a job of a lawyer. To start with, let us uh, see what would be the benefits of this. One is uh, public interest. Uh, it need not be reiterated about uh, the number of pending cases in this country. The system is bursting at the seams. So we keep hearing about uh, 250 years it would take to clear the arrears in this uh, country. And if we keep on adding cases uh, to these mounting arrears, it will be impossible for people to have any faith in this uh, institution. And if that faith is lost, uh, then it's going to be 
creating havoc in the society because people would uh, start resorting to alternate methods contrary to law. So in public interest it is uh, an imminent need that we reduce uh, litigation in courts, find a solution to uh, problems. Apart from that, at a personal level, you uh, see that uh, resolving disputes at the threshold would improve harmony in the society. How is that uh, going to happen? Because a person who has a dispute uh, succeeds in court, uh, be it a matrimonial relationship or a commercial litigation or any other litigation for that matter of fact, but uh, the relationship has gone. He might be happy that he has succeeded, but otherwise he would not be friends with the person or the relationship which he had with the person who, against whom he has won would not be the same. So that would definitely be something which has to be uh, looked at in the sense that at the anvil, even before somebody starts uh, thinking of uh, litigation, if those matters uh, can be mediated and then solutions found to the problem, uh, that would improve, uh, according to me, tranquility and harmony in the uh, society. At a personal level, if lawyers, unlike those uh, who are present in this room because of your coming from the Delhi High Court uh, Advocates Association, I'll just say why I'm saying this uh, a little later. There is some sort of a diffidence amongst the lawyer community that uh, helping or promoting mediation is going to uh, have uh, an impact on their pockets. There is a feeling that uh, this would be creating a reduction of litigation and uh, ultimately would affect their survival, which is not true. There is uh, enough uh, litigation in this country, number one. And if the faith of uh, the people in this uh, institution where you're providing an alternate uh, dispute resolution which uh, reduces uh, the length of the litigation in courts, reduces the cost and expense at which it comes, and if it is done in a peaceful manner, would uh, actually promote people to approach the courts and approach persons who are appointed by the courts to resolve the disputes. So it's not going to affect lawyers at all. But my experience of being a lawyer for a long number of years and a judge for a short period of six years is that in most parts of the country there is some sort of a resistance uh, from the bar to adopt mediation as a means of uh, resolving disputes. I need not tell you about Samadhan. Even Niranjan Shah was appreciating uh, the model that is followed by uh, the Delhi High Court annexed mediation center, mainly because it is run by the bar. Though it is uh, overseen by the judges, but the bar has taken an active role in uh, establishing this center and running it uh, very successfully. There is definitely a major role played uh, by the judges of the High Court who are aware of the importance of uh, uh, referring matters to mediation and ensuring that the infrastructure in place and uh, more importantly in uh, having uh, programs like this in training enthusiastic uh, lawyers to become uh, mediators. My experience in the uh, Supreme Court has been that uh, uh, mediation is uh, taken to be something uh, forced on the parties. Um, I should tell you that when we are not interested in issuing a notice and we tell a council uh, will issue notice if you attempt a mediation, no counsel would say, dismiss my case. So there are orders saying that issue notice only for mediation. Uh, so they go through the process and they go before uh, the mediators. 
uh, not taking away any credit from the mediators, all these years the experience has been, I've spoken to a few parties, that uh, most of these uh, mediations are done in the cubicles in the Supreme Court uh, by lawyers who have work. Parties are asked to go and sit in the cubicle. In between, a lawyer is called in some court. Another lawyer is called by his colleague in the veranda. So this is uh, no mediation. Uh, I'm just giving an example of the Supreme Court because I've been practicing there. So the infrastructure in the high courts might be worse. The procedure that is followed there also might not be really good. But I'm told that uh, the Delhi High Court and next mediation center has the best of the facilities where parties come and then uh, time and attention is devoted to them and they feel that under the aegis of the court, if trained mediators are trying to find a solution uh, to their problems, uh, definitely things would uh, go well. They might not be diffident. In the scenario which uh, I told you about uh, people being pushed for mediation, most of the cases come back saying that mediation failed. We have a one paragraph uh, letter written by the mediator saying that it has failed. And thereafter the matter gets dismissed or otherwise there is a persuasion by lawyers, uh, please hear a matter on merits which we normally don't permit them. Uh, that's a different aspect altogether. There is one issue where uh, some people are of the opinion that uh, there should be compulsory mediation like uh, the provision in the uh, Commercial Courts Act. Uh, mediation itself being uh, voluntary, whether uh, the parties should be forced to go to mediation is a point of uh, debate. But if you see countries like uh, Australia and even Canada, where initially there is a compulsion that parties should try mediation and if they don't try mediation, there will be uh, exemplary costs imposed on them. Thereafter, uh, nobody forces them to accept the uh, proposal of the other side and nobody forces them to say that uh, it's all right, I agree because uh, the court said so. Uh, and I'm not very sure this is a point which has to be decided uh, by courts in the bill uh, that is uh, uh, pending before the parliament. Uh, there is nothing mentioned in that, but uh, Narsima who, Justice Narsima who made the report, he was speaking to me and he said that there is uh, some sort of uh, an idea which he has that uh, there should be an amendment in the bill where you make it compulsory, not restricted only to the Commercial Courts Act in other litigations also. Now coming to the amendment to the uh, CPC Section 89. We have been having this Section 89 which has been uh, uh, actually looked into thoroughly by the uh, Supreme Court in Salem Bar as well as AFCONS. Uh, whatever uh, problems uh, were pointed out about Section uh, uh, 89, Justice Ravindran tried to take care of those uh, problems and then let the uh, civil judges uh, follow whatever is there in 89. But uh, the uh, statistics or data which has been collected over the years uh, show that uh, not many judges uh, have been taking interest in referring matters. Um, in the MCPC, Recently, when we had a meeting, we were thinking about uh, um, having intense training for uh, referral judges. Uh, unless they are trained, uh, they would not uh, be understanding the importance of uh, referring matters uh, to uh, mediators. And in so far as High Court judges are concerned, like uh, the Delhi High Court where you have original jurisdiction, and apart from this, the other High Courts, that is the high courts which are not presidencies. Even though they have appellate jurisdictions, there is uh, enough scope uh, for trying mediation even at a first appellate stage or a second appellate uh, stage also. There is a need to sensitize judges. I would not call uh, that, uh, I would not say that the high court judges need the training, uh, but otherwise there is definitely a need for all of us uh, to sensitize ourselves about the need for referral of matters uh, for uh, mediation. Uh, 
life is a, a process where you keep learning. There's no end to learning. Like uh, you have attended a program earlier, you must all be uh, trained uh, mediators after having gone that 40 hour training. You are now at this uh, advanced uh, training. But uh, it's not as if uh, this is the end of the story. But you have to keep uh, undergoing this uh, training to learn uh, better techniques uh, to deal with uh, matters coming from uh, various branches of law and then dealing with people. It's not only law, there are, I think, uh, so many other aspects which are taught, like psychology, like understanding the social uh, background of uh, people. There are various things uh, that uh, you would be taught. There's no end to this learning, so please take more interest in programs like this. This would definitely uh, make you better mediators. Recently, I was uh, looking at uh, the uh, statistics of the number of uh, trainers that are available with MCPC. We are told that uh, there are only 57 trainers. Uh, slowly, the demand has been on the increase from uh, the other parts of the country where they are asking us for trainers to be sent for this 40-hour training. Today, uh, the Allahabad High Court is starting uh, their 40-hour training program. Uh, today evening, there is an inauguration. I have a request from Trivandrum, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh also where they want to have training of lawyers uh, at the district headquarters. So if we keep sending uh, trainers from here, even on a rotation, it might be difficult to meet the demand. And the idea is that uh, this uh, has to uh, be promoted by making it uh, more popular, which should be done at the level of the bar associations. See, the, your bar association has been very active in it because this is your centre. But in so far as the other bars are concerned, we do not know how we have to promote it. We will have to find a way of uh, promoting this uh, as a movement rather. And uh, the other aspect is that uh, user awareness also has to be uh, uh, taken up. The users should not feel that this is only a, a step in uh, uh, the process of litigation. When somebody says that let us go for mediation, earlier uh, you must all be knowing in most of the contracts, uh, you have a mediation clause before the matter take, goes for arbitration. So, I have also attempted mediations because of the compulsion. But everybody was thinking, it's alright, we'll go through this process and thereafter the matter will go to arbitration. So, that mindset uh, has to uh, change. Uh, likewise, if this is really encouraged at the referral stages itself and uh, with the supervision and uh, a watchful eye of the court, a number of mediations would succeed. Your uh, uh, mediation center has the best of the records along with Bangalore. Otherwise, uh, it's not the same in so far as the other uh, courts are concerned. Madras, I think, was the first to start the High Court uh, Mediation Center, but the results uh, there uh, don't match uh, the results we see here. The number of mediations uh, that are made and the number of successful mediations are much more. I think it's about 60% or 65% in uh, Delhi. Uh, we only hope that uh, the other uh, high courts would uh, replicate this. I did not want to uh, speak anything about uh, how a mediator should be, what are the problems of the system. You must have discussed for the last three days about everything. But uh, I would only hope that uh, things undergo a change in the other parts of the country and the other bar associations replicate what you are doing. All the best.